Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions on a sunny afternoon, 4 p.m. BST. In the studio with me is Dr. Ellis Whitehead. Today, we're going to take a little look at the new free uh, data build tool for the Amazon community. I'm just going to quickly share to the groups. Ellis, do you want to tell everyone what you've been up to in the last few days? Oh, well... On a personal level, I, for those who have uh, kids who are still in school, uh, my kids started back to school this week, and that's uh, that's that's always an exciting period of time to see what's going on there. And business-wise, we're working on a bunch of things, including some DSP and sponsored brand stuff that's exciting for us. Um, yeah, and then now we're going to show off a new tool that we are publishing today. Cool. Right. What I'm going to do now, I'm just quickly share these to the groups. And then what I'll do is I'll share my screen quickly, go over the front of the site, and then you can do the demonstration of the actual tool and the data itself. So okay. give me a second while I just share my screen. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. Is this come up on the screen? Yes, it is. Excellent. Right, so this is the, the new data bill uh, website. You can see here introduction video, stuff like that you can take a look a little look at later, some testimonials, etc. Uh, we've also got case studies here. Um, on there, there's three different case studies from current clients. We are building a new exit page, which is for clients that who came to data brill who've gone on to have an exit with their business we've had three so far so far there's one on the way now so i'll put those case studies up and those testimonials soon um, so you can see these case studies just scrolling down if you hover over it'll give you annotation of what's going on but the uh the key thing what we're here today to talk about of course is the tool so just going to bring this into view now Ellis will do uh, a full demo of the, the breakdown and the simplicity. Uh, we do have a video here. Uh, I'm not sure if this picks up the audio. Not really. Cool. So there's videos on the site. You can see it gives you a breakdown. It will go through absolutely everything on to how to use the tool. If we scroll down here, very, very simple. You take your uh, your search term report, and then what happens? You upload it. It takes a few seconds, and then you download that data, and then obviously you can go in and optimize. I'm going to hand the screen back to Ellis, and you can go and do a run through the data if you don't mind. Sure. Well, one thing I might uh, mention while you're getting my screen up uh, is uh we do not uh keep your data that you upload uh, that's so right under the gdpr we destroy the da data after we don't collect email addresses there's no um there's no sign up or anything to use at all the tool is absolutely free to use yeah okay great so what we're looking at here is the spreadsheet that will open up once you've downloaded it if you're using excel it will you might get some errors. I think you probably will. It'll say something about recovered data. We're not sure why that is. You can just click uh, OK, recover, and you'll get uh, you'll get this all the data that's here. So what we'll have here is the uh, keywords, um, the terms. These are your ASINs and search terms that the users have entered in in this column, your major statistics for impressions, clicks, orders, spend, and sales. And then your percentage statistics of A cost, click through rate, conversion rate, and CPC. And what we're going to look at is five questions that you can help answer with a spreadsheet like this. You'll have in here a certain number of keywords. It'll be maybe somewhere between 20 and 100, depending on how, um, depending on your data set. And these are the best and worst keywords in the sense that they have the highest statistics for some of these uh, different numbers here. And the first question that we're going to want to ask is, are there important converting search terms that you're not aware of? And for that, you can look down the list from top to bottom. And this top part of the list, whoops, this top part of the list is, I just clicked something here, is the most important. Um, and, oh no. Okay, uh, 
not sure what's happening. The top, the top part of the list is the most important. This is going to have the ones that have had the highest uh, spend and sales. And as you look down it, you're going to be looking for ones that have reasonably good conversion rates or high sales. And you're going to consider, do these need to go into your title, bullet points, or backends? And this is where you're going to apply the knowledge of your domain to ascertain that. The next question is, should I advertise more aggressively on certain search terms? And to answer this, you're going to take a look at the ACOS column here. And you're going to be comparing it to your target ACOS. If you know your margins, you can use this as the comparison. So understanding your target ACOS up front will make you far better man manager of these things. And you'll, as you go down this list, you might find some that have really low ACOS that are branded keywords. That's very normal for them to have low A cost, but if it's not branded keywords, then those are ones where you have room to go more aggressively. The third question is, are any there any search terms I should invest in ranking higher for organically? And here you can look at the conversion rate column. Um, if the conversion rate is particularly good, then it makes sense to uh, try to do more here. So it used to be that you could just get your way to the top by pushing PPC. Sometimes it still works, but very often it doesn't. And so if you're going to invest the money in an external campaign uh, and you're going to try going aggressively on it, then you need to make sure that you have a really good conversion rate to begin with. Otherwise, it'll just be wasted money. Fourth question is, are there more terms I should tr uh, track my organic ranking for? So you might want to be looking here down the terms and you want to consider both your sales and your conversion rate for this. If either of these are good, then you'll probably want to consider adding them to your tracker if they're not there already. Our final question is, are there keywords that are spending too much? And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to sort the spend column from highest to lowest, um, which I see somewhere in, okay, this was, was already sorted from uh, highest to lowest. Um, and you're going to, uh, catch my thoughts here, um, you're going to be, this is going to be showing you where your budget is being spent. So you want to scan the ACOS and conversion rate columns again, as we had done before. And you can compare your ACOS with your target ACOS. And if it's too high, you can see that you're burning too much. And now from here, there are two things that you can do. If your ACOS is too high and the conversion rate is low, then you might want to consider negating the keyword and just getting rid of it. If your ACOS is too high, but the conversion rate is good, you might just want to reduce your bids. And so those are five major questions and a sort of five minute process that you can go through to help answer them. So the idea of this was to keep things really simple. Now we've run through that in five minutes. It may take a little while to sink in. We've done a little video on the site. The important thing is people overcomplicate PPC. Yes, in some cases it is. But the idea is, is with this tool is look, can you ask five questions? How do we take the monstrosity of these big files from uh, Seller Central and then condense them down? As, as Ellis said, they're working based on the performance of your best, worst keywords in terms of statistics. So the thing for us was, how do we build something very, very simple, as you can see, it's very straightforward, it's color coded, it's done in gradients, with the gradients, it's gone from bright green down to white, which is giving you the measurements of highest to lowest. But the most important thing is asking these questions on your campaign. And second to that, I know Ellis loves it. He's a data scientist, but not everyone wants to sit there and mine their reports. And if there's a simplified process to do it, there are other ways of doing it out there. But I think simplicity is key, especially if you're starting out and you're building as an Amazon seller. If you've got something that's just very, very basic to use. As I said, there's no limitation. We're not selling this tool. We don't keep the data. You don't need any email addresses. Uh, there's a support video there. Just thinking it was a good way of people 
to try and narrow this whole thing down. Now, obviously, campaign structure and stuff, you can go back and listen to previous uh, episodes of Seller Sessions, and there's some wonderful people in the space that have their own processes as well. But I think what we really want to do is just come with something that was simplified that you can sit down. If you don't have a massive account, like Ellis just said, uh, that was condensed down to about 20 search terms. And in total, I think there was like 100 in there. But what it does, it zooms into focus. You look in here at the 80-20 rule and uh, obviously just to get the job done. Um, let's have a look here. Does anyone have any questions for us? I'm just going to say some hellos to people in the feed. Andrew's here saying hello. He also back smiling, saying uh, excited. Uh, Selva is here. Hello from Singapore. Um, George is here. Great to see you, Danny. Cybe, uh, hi, guys. Everyone loves the tool. <laughs> nice one, chaps. Wellington's back. Thank you, guys, for the hard work. This is very helpful. So happy to take okay. any uh, any questions there. So I just want to remind you, just go back to recap, right? So these are the five most important questions that we are making the suggestion of. Are there important converting search terms that you're not aware of? That's one. The second one, should I advertise more aggressively on certain search terms? Number three, are there any search terms I should invest in ranking higher organically? Number four, are there any more terms I should uh, use uh, in, in terms of thinking about which one should I be tracking for? And number five, uh, are the keywords that are spending too much? I'm not sure if Alice mentioned earlier on, but is obviously you take your own decision on when you're filtering through this list, are they relevant to add those to your listing as well? So although it's the PPC tool, it gives you an idea for a few other bits and pieces. Uh, there's no great surprises in that. Everyone knows how to optimize, or they should know how to optimize their listing. Uh, but all this does is summarizes and breaks things down. I think I might have a question here. Uh, here we go. Shireen says, why negate, yeah, why negate instead of turning off? Ellis? Uh, it depends on the structure of your auto and broad campaigns. You may be picking it up, these keywords up through auto or broad campaigns, and then the only way to get rid of them is to negate. If you do have an exact match on it, then sure, you can stop that, but Amazon might still send that keyword your way through the auto and broad campaigns that are running. Cool. I'm just going to post the, uh, the link now in the chat. So just go and visit databrill.com and you'll be able to visit from now. Um, so Ellis, putting you on the spot now, obviously they're going to come to a point where we will uh, do some slight upgrades. What are what's some of the ideas that you want to integrate into the tool as well as it develops? Well, one of the things I'd really like to add, I mean, of course, you only want to put in the effort if people do find it helpful. So yeah, um, course, starting yeah. out with something simple. Um, but the next most uh, helpful thing would be to show the minimized forms of these search terms. Yeah. So when you run the search term report, you get the queries that more or less people typed in, which will have uh, words like for and with and uh, in that Amazon actually totally ignores for the sake of PPC. Yeah. And so in your PPC campaigns, it's really best to only use the minimized forms where all of these what are called stop words are removed and where you're using the singular terms instead of the uh, plural terms. And so for something like house shoes for women, that would become house shoe woman. And that way, if when we minimize the search terms, that compresses the data even more. So because right now in the search term report, you'd have search uh, house shoes for women in one line, and you might have a second line with um, house shoes women or house shoes for a woman. And all these are actually, should actually be just one keyword in your, um, in your campaigns. And they match, they match those three. And so we can uh, try doing, um, upgrading it for, so that we have the minimized forms. That said, we don't know all the minimized forms across all of Amazon. And so it's a little bit, you know, it would be a bit of work to try to make it work really well with 
uh, just you know files that people upload uh, offhand. Yep. Uh, we've got a uh, question here from Morris. When launching at first an auto campaign, would you start with a high bid or really low? Uh, that depends on your your budgets. So if you don't mind spending the money and you want to get the results faster and you don't mind just burning through bad clicks, then start with a high bat bid. That'll get you where you're going the fastest. However, that is not the case for most sellers. And so then it's a question of, well, high, how high do you want to go? And that's, that's then a business strategy decision. If you're not in a big rush, then you can start at a, you know, just, or you could run, say, medium bids one day, drop them down the next, and kind of wait to see what data comes through uh, when, you're, when you have different bids bid levels cool right so we're gonna make a move now so uh don't forget to vote at seller poll seller poll is brought to you by fresio please guys drop me an email danny at databrill.com we'd love to get your feedback on the tool obviously we're in beta so there's going to be a few bugs if you've got feature ideas and stuff like that that everything goes into consideration but hopefully you'll get some benefit from it Again, on the website, there is a video that breaks down the steps. The video is only four minutes long. Uh, once you've nailed this down, you should be able to optimize on a, a general size account, not a massive account, a general size account. It should br bring down a lot of the time and a lot of pain and take that off the table for you. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us today, Ellis. Again, guys, uh, Danny at adatabrill.com if you have any questions about the tool or about the agency. Uh, I'll be back here again 4 p.m. tomorrow, BST. Take care. Take care.